this just doesn't end. I swear to God, it does not end. Like, wow. I'm annoyed. Hey, buttered pear. So, if you didn't know, I'm going to take you back in a little history lesson. I'm going to wait for a few more people to get in here, and then I'll get into this. I finally got the paperwork on what uh, Rattle Can said to the, tried to petition to get me, the or the order of protection against me. Sorry, I'm getting mad. I'm getting tongue-tied. Just the shit he says is unfucking believable And he's so scared. He's so fucking scared of me, right? Remember that. He's fucking scared. That's why he needed a protection order. Hold on a second. Let me, let me look at it. Let me get my mail up. Hey, Kitty Kins, PDQ, Salsa, Mindy. Good afternoon, everybody. Rare Gold. Woodstock, what's up? Nana Riley. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Kitty Kins. I appreciate you all being here, the support, all that. We got some stuff to discuss. Harvey. I'm actually, I'm feeling good today. Believe it or not, I'm feeling really good. Last night, I at first, it, okay, it's hard to eat in these. I'm getting used to it. But I was having a hard time after, you know, on Monday, eating and stuff. But last night, I was good. I got down with the get down. I ate more than I probably ate in this whole year in one set. Like, well, one, one setting. I, it took me a while, but I ate, and I feel great. I felt like I actually ate enough. You know what I mean? Just me charms. All right, which stop? Donna Marie, thank you. Jamie. So let's just give a little history lesson. Years ago, when I first started like being active on YouTube, like, I didn't, I never, I thought YouTube was nothing but like recipes and music videos. And then I came across, um, oh God, I came across uh, Amy Slayton, right? And I got really into her and she was like the only one that I would watch. I was like, oh my God, on YouTube, they have shows like this. You know what I mean? Like I, I didn't even know that people could do reality shows. So she was actually the first one that I watched and I had compassion for and I liked her. I even sent her money I put in a little owl card. I'll never remember. She didn't give me a shout out. I got my feelings hurt, made a big eruption over it. And I don't even know why I did. It really wasn't that deep, but I did. And um, anyways, along that path, I ended up meeting, uh, running into this channel. And at the time it was on YouTube, it was like called Small Town Radio. And it was this guy who you guys probably know is Rattle Can Ron, Welfare Ron, whatever you want to fucking call him. So anyways, at first I thought, okay, he seems pretty funny. You know, it was back in the day when it was cool to be edgy on YouTube and edgy is something that I've always been, whatever. So I'm like, yeah, this is my fucking shit, you know? Well, at first I thought everything was cool. I met a cool group of people and it happened to be like, like Yaba and shit like that. Just a bunch of randoms that you guys know now, bunny shit like that. We were all in this little, like, I wouldn't say we were a group of friends, but we were all kind of just in this little group, okay? So anyways, as time went on, different people get, you know, closer with other people. Oh, can't pick up right now, sweetheart. Different people get closer with other people, you know? So I kind of got closer with Yaba and shit like that. Well, in the meantime, fucking Ron was trying to take claim to everything that I did. For instance, I rolled out a t-shirt line and he totally botched that. Didn't get no fucking money for that. Um, we had a big ex exposed video, didn't, you know, whatever. So a lot of things went down right about that time. But basically what happened is uh, but Yabba's fucking address got uh, exposed to fucking Rattle Can and he called CPS on uh, Butch and there began the whole turmoil, all right? Fuck him is what I'm thinking. Like, if you're going to, and this is before any of us really knew what doxing was and going after kids. Like, Ron is known forever, okay? But the rest of us were just like, kind of like, what the fuck is going on? It was the first time any of us had been like really shook. You know what I mean? Sorry, I know I'm sorry. It's just, I'm getting used to talking with the teeth and now I'm going to sound different because I have all the teeth in my mouth, okay? I honestly sound like I do. I, this voice, I haven't heard it in a while. And it was probably when I was in my 20s before I started missing teeth, okay? I'm fucking wretched. What do you want from me? Absolute menace because I have some fake teeth. Leave me alone. Anyways. So, 
And there began all the turmoil and all that. And since then, it has been fucking war between all of us. We've fallen out, we've fallen in, back and forth, whatever. But one thing that's been fucking consistent is Ron playing the fucking victim no matter what. And he is the biggest instigator in fucking every... He's the biggest instigator in all of the fights we've ever had in the history of time. Because he's been doing some dirty shit behind the scenes, getting fucking people riled up, doing horrible shit, and then acting like, oh my God, why are you attacking me, motherfuckers? Okay, and let me tell you why. Everything that he has coming. Now, I'm just going to get a few things cleared up. Before I start, I go into what I really want to talk about. Um, and it, it has to do with what he went and told the courts on me. Um, I never went for Ron. I used to hang out with Ron. And then I realized he was a terrible person, a terrible father, a terrible everything. And I didn't want to fucking be his friend anymore. So I quit being his friend. And then he wanted that, like a full-blown war. Well, it was already war because I called that when <coughs> he called CPS on Yaba. Okay. So um, things started happening. I started calling him out. He was doing, he was living out there in Morristown at the time. And he lived in these little hut apartments, right? And he had this fake gun and he was playing with it. And at the time, his audience didn't know, you know, because he's famous for saying like mukbang shotguns, whatever the hell he says, like these horrible things. And um, anyways, he had a fake gun and he was playing with it. And I saw his kid in the background. And I thought that was like the most horrible thing you can do. It's even if, it, even if it's fake, we didn't know it was fake at the time we found out later. He wanted us to believe it was a real gun. You know what I mean? Because he was trying to get sympathy. It was one of those things, you know, his pattern anyways. So I said, I went live and I did say, uh, everybody that's wrong. And if you think that it's wrong, then you need to look out for the welfare of that child and call who you need to call. Yes, I did. I said that. Okay. That's, that's about it. Then a couple of years and that made him mad enough to continue his little bullshit for years and years and years. Um, and then about two years ago, what happened was he, he had a son that he had signed over all rights to. He said he didn't call CPS on Yaba, but he was the hit man. He was the hitman in it all. He was the one who called for her fucking information. And whether he did it or not, he got someone to fucking do it. Doesn't matter. It was, his name is written all over this. At the end, he started everything by fucking with people in their real life. Okay? That's it. I, you're not going to rewrite history, any of you, because I was there and I remember it. So anyways, then, you know, I, at this point, it, it, years have gone by and he's just been a horrible person. And um, just, I know everything that he does is shady or for money or to, you know, use his audience and try to get money off of him or however he can. Okay. So when me, who I have personally hung out with him and met his children and shit like that, when he said, oh, my son, I was immediately like, what? You know, thinking it was the ones that I had met. But no, this was a kid that I had never met before. And he's never talked about before. When this instance, when this child passes away, he's so sad. Like he just can't go on. And, oh my God, to his audience and all this. Remind you, he got eaten. He's hung out with the kid maybe a handful of times in his life. Signed over his rights to the kid. Okay, so what the fuck, dude? All of a sudden, you're so heartbroken. Well, why weren't you heartbroken when you were writing over the fucking paperwork uh, to sign him over? Where was the heartbreak then? Where's the heartbreak been when, on his birthdays, on holidays, on all these things that you know you haven't been part of because your ass has been lied with your other kids for the world to see? Never mentioning another son. You didn't give a fuck about your kid then. Now, all of a sudden, you want to give a fuck when the kid passes away? Hmm. It, instantly, I knew something was up with this. I knew it, goddamn it. I can always smell a fucking con. Just like I called out that lion and fucking stinky butt shit. There's no reason that nobody should donate directly to St. Jude. You could use, they should have been smarter about that, okay? If they were going to fucking con, they could have used any, any fucking, um, what do you call it? Any fucking, anything else in the world but St. Jude. Because we all know it's St. Jude. When you donate, you get, you do it right through the site and you get a receipt. Anyways, that's a side point. Side point. I knew something was up with it when he started to go fund me. And was collecting money for a gravestone. So, yes, I did. Uh, I knew something was wrong. And I was live. And I was t sitting there watching him. And I was telling my audience, you know, I, I don't believe this. Something's not right here. So, I live in the same state that he does. So, what I did is I went online. And I looked up the obituary and all that. And I figured out which funeral home that everything was going to take place at. And where he was going to get buried. So, I went ahead and I called the funeral home. And I talked to the funeral director. And I said, I know that there is a GoFundMe for Mason's grave, um, but I would like to donate directly to you instead of online because something just doesn't seem right here. And he says, okay, whatever, I'll be right back. He comes back on the phone and this is live. Uh, comes back on the phone and he goes, ma'am, that grave stone's been paid for in full. I said, thank you very much. Hang up the phone. I start going in. I said, I told you guys, I knew, told you, told you, told you, you know how I am when I get excited. So it was all that. Well, uh, this baby decides, oh my God, she's trying to ruin my grief and all this, you know, make me look like a shithead when I'm a grieving father who's lost his son, da, 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 da. And um, just trying to deflect from me just calling him out. So he disappears. He does one of his Houdini things and says, I'm quitting. I'm taking everything off the internet, da, 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 da. Disappeared. The motherfucker didn't even leave us in suspense for a month. He came back a couple weeks later. But the funny thing is, is he looked a little different because he was covered in tattoos. Now, where did he get the money to get tattoos from? Because just a couple weeks ago, you had to go fund me because you couldn't afford to pay for a grave for your, for your deceased child. 
you put two and two together. You took that money and you went and got tattoos with that money. So I called him out even more. And ever since then, and, and people seen what I was saying, like the truth was out there. He couldn't hide from it anymore. So what does he do? He, the, he turns it all around. So he's a victim again. He goes on and on and on. Now I could give a shit less about him. I've been living my, well, not my very best life or so. I think my very best fucking life out here, you know, getting drunk for the last year or so, whatever, saying stupid shit. And he's never been part of that. Like, who are you? Get the fuck away. You are forgotten to me. But he continuously brings me up over and over and over again. And I continuously ignore him up until like about a month ago. I realized he does nothing but take my content. You know, one of the shirts that he sold the most of had my likelihood on it. And I never got a dollar from that. Just saying. And I could have done so many things. I could have sued him. I could have, I could still sue him. I could sue the fuck out of him right now. Does he not understand? I don't think he fucking gets it. So long story short, this man is very scared of me. Okay. So scared that he has to go down to the courthouse after taunting me for fucking weeks saying I have AIDS. Even when I showed a blood test that I clearly didn't have AIDS, telling his audience and other people that he likes watching me die slowly. Um, basically target harassing me, trying to get people to, you know, come and attack me and say that I don't care about his kid who passed away. And I never knew your kid, neither did the rest of us, and neither did you, motherfucker. So anyways, he's like, you know, sending all these people. Now, I'm the single woman here. I live alone. This is a man doing this to me, okay? Meanwhile, I'm just like fighting it every fucking year that it happens. The endless amounts of harassment and lies that he fucking makes up because he's mad at me because I busted him out bigger than shit, more than anybody else has, okay? In the meanwhile, you know, he's been fucking with Yaba and Sam, too, the entire time. They've been in the mix, and he endless over there, too. Like, this is all he does. Like, it's his, he's a professional victim, and he has chosen me, Yaba, and Sam as his victims, okay? To, you know, draw money off of whatever. Again, let me tell you, he uses my fucking picture to sell t-shirts. I didn't see a dollar of that, and my likelihood, rather. I didn't see a fucking dollar of that. Fucking SDS did that shit, too. A lot of people did, but whatever, whatever. Anyways. So he goes down to his court last week, week before, and files a protection order, okay? Now, me, I'm like, I didn't do anything to him. I've never threatened him. I've never done anything, never even so much as, I don't even know his address. I don't care. I don't know his phone number. I don't care. And I think it's pretty fucking evident to everybody that unless it's like directly affecting my life, I could give a rat's ass, dude. I really could because I just got too much going on in my real life to fucking cause problems ever, anywhere else, especially to add problems to myself, okay? So he goes down to the courthouse, and this is what he wrote. He petitioned to the judge to try to get a protection order against me. I finally got that paperwork. Let's just go through it step by step. And I will post all of these on Twitter when I get done. It says uh, Ron versus Katie, which my legal name is Catherine. Hold on. And can I remind you guys, he's so scared. He goes and files this protection order. And all of this is some bullshit. Wait until you hear it. No wonder the court denied him. He waited till it was denied. He quit talking about me. He waited till it was denied and then immediately went back to talking shit about me. He's so scared of me that he went and wasted court resources in time. Then when he didn't get what he wanted out of it, he went right back to harassing me. In fact, my name was in his fucking uh, title today. Now, does that look like a scared man to you? So this is what he wrote. He's, yes, he's using the legal system to intimidate women. Right there it is. Okay, so it says, you know, Ron versus Katie. And you guys can all see this in the end on Twitter. I'm going to post it all on Twitter. I'm going to up. I am filing a petition for myself. He didn't even have an attorney. I thought they had all this big money. I thought that they had, uh, I don't think it's him. No, Cammy, it's not him. Trust me. Yes, I need those links, by the way. I do need those links. So, anyways. I am filing a petition for myself. Okay, big money. Again, I thought you guys had lawyers out the ass and all this. Where's the lawyer? Why are you doing it for yourself is my first question. It's just a fucking lie. Just another lie. Um, I am or have been a victim of stalking. I'm stalking him now. Everybody, I'm stalking him. He talks about me every fucking day, but I'm stalking him. Okay. I am or have been a victim of repeated acts of harassment. Okay. How old is the respondent? You put 35. Which I am. I am 35. This case is filed with this county because I live in this county. Oh, and look, and there's his address. First time I, I, I've seen his address the entire time. I don't know where the fuck lives. Now I do. Good. So when I file paperwork on him, I'll know where to send it. Oh, okay. The respondent has committed the following acts of domestic or family violence, stalking, sex offense, or harassment. Please check below. And this is the ones that he checked. He checked. The respondent threatened to cause physical harm to me. Have I ever once... Threatened to cause physical harm to him. What am I going to say? Hey, dude, I'm going to beat you up. Yeah. Just, that's so fucking ridiculous. The respondent placed me in fear of physical harm. In fear of physical harm. Okay. 
the respondent committed stalking against me. Interesting. I, I've never stepped foot on his property or even in Connorsville for that fucking matter. The respondent comment, committed repeated acts of harassment against me. All right. Now it's like, you know, explain what the hell you mean. Describe what happened in each of these incidents, incidents above. Katie Roby went live on her YouTube channel and blamed me for a CPS call a friend of hers had received. She told over 400 people to take me down. And she commenced to share my son's school location and the location of my apartment while stating she wanted my child taken away. This sparked what is now four years of harassment and me ultimately filing this order. There are many instances with videos and photographic evidence. What, Dad? All right, I'll see you later. All right, list the names of all the people who were present during the incident. You must include your own name. And he puts himself and me. And this was seven, he put this was back in February of 2018. Now, incident number two, that's incident number one. That was, that was incident number one. Okay, I admit that. I fucking lost my shit when I knew, because you guys got to understand, at this point in time, we had never gone real life with anybody before. He has already gotten the, whether he made the phone call or not, he was the one who, he was the hitman on it. He got the information to call CPS on Yaba. And again, we're not used to this kind of shit, so everyone freaked out. So now he's just going on and on and on. Like he's this big tough guy and all this shit. And the only reason that people even like me or Yaba is because of him. Or they wouldn't know of me and Yaba. Or Sam really didn't have a channel back then. But, you know, because of him. He wants to take full credit of this shit. Whatever. So then he starts acting weird when people aren't having that and stuff. And then that's when he did the gun thing the, with the fake gun, which we know afterwards. Because I did. I called, called the police on him. And I said, hey, you need to go over there and check out what's going on. Because there's a child. And I have the video proof. I sent it. I said, there's a child. I can't remember if I sent it over, honestly, or not. But I know that I had the proof. Anyways, I told him, you need to go over there and do a welfare check. Something's not right here. So they did just that. And then they found out it was a fake gun and all that and da 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 And, um, well, in that moment when I was upset, you know, I got, I was live and I was like, you guys, it's in right. This is where I didn't dox his address, but I said, it's across from this school. And if you put two and two together, you know, where his son goes to school and we can't leave a child in date. I don't care if we do. At this point, we didn't know if it was real or fake. So yeah, I did. I did do that. Okay, totally did. But I feel like that's justified 100%. And that was years ago, okay? And even then, it was a hundred, it was more justified at that point. And I, I stand by my decision on saying that. I will never fucking apologize to him a day in my life. Okay, so that, that's number one. And he's he's crybabying about it from 2018, okay? So we'll move on. Dad, get out of here. Quit being nosy. All right. Okay, and this supposedly happened 722 on a YouTube live stream. Katie Roby again calls for people to take me down and he keeps putting like quotes, take you down and call agencies. This is four years after she had a similar stream and CPS showed up at my house multiple times in a short period of time. Listen, maybe if you weren't acting a fucking fool, it wouldn't have happened. I wasn't the only one concerned. I did go like everyone was witnessing it too. And we were all on the same page. This is not fucking right. Listen, I'm not a mom and I don't want heart. I know I said some fucked up shit in the past when I was drunk or just being stupid or trying to hurt someone's feelings, bottom line, where I've said, well, your kid's retarded or your kid's ugly. I never would say that about a child in real life or even in, even online if I wasn't a hundred percent provoked, you know, but me not being a mom, even though I'm not, cause I know that's going to be said. I know when, what is right and what's wrong to be in front of a kid. Okay. And you don't do that kind of shit in front of a child. And this was back like four or five years ago. So you got to imagine he was really little then. Like I'm talking about like six, seven years old, something like that. Maybe even young when he like six or seven guys. I don't know. His kid was young when it was happening and they're impressionable. And you don't, you just don't do that as a fucking adult. And me, it's not even being a parent is saying that. So come on. He should have known. So more than one person definitely called on him that day because it was so fucking inappropriate. It was justified. So anyways, he's bitching because CPS showed up at his house multiple times in a short period. All on record, I have video evidence of this incident. She is on panel with two other people who harass and defame me daily. They are not of interest, only her. Oh, you know who he's talking about? He's talking about CJ and he's talking about uh, tragic now because he said two other people of interest on panel. He's talking about, that's what he is. And he's trying to say, but they're not important. This is, it's only her. She is using their voices to defame and potentially cause me and my child harm. Whatever. That I don't feel like that ever happened. What the fuck, dude? Shut up. Just what the hell are you talking about? Now, this is a pure bullshit lie. 100% bullshit. And if you need to subpoena my fucking everything I got, I don't have a Rumble account. I don't do Rumble. If there is a Rumble account, I haven't logged into it for years because I, I don't do Rumble. I know of it, but I don't have a Rumble. I don't do Rumble. I don't do any of that. So subpoena my motherfucking electronics, every single one of them down to my cell phone, okay? I Let the courts do that. Listen to this lie. Listen to this bullshit lie. This happened on 822, apparently. 
Rumble live streaming app. I was hosting a broadcast and Katie Roby joined with a name mocking me and spent an hour berating me with troops and with tr troops and slander. Attached are examples. Her phone will hold this information along with other accounts that she uses to harass. Absolutely subpoena every fucking electronic I have. Everything down to my iPad and my cell phone. That's fine. I didn't fucking do that. I don't have the time in the world to make up fucking troll accounts and go and talk shit to people on the internet. Sorry, I've got a life. I don't have time to harass motherfuckers on the internet. Go, get the fuck out of here, dude. That is a bullshit lie. Every single, every single bit of that is a fucking lie. And that's what pisses me off. That's the kind of shit he does. What do, what do you mean? Why would I make up an account and mock you? For what reason? I don't watch you on YouTube. I don't watch you anywhere else. So I'm going to go out of my way, spend my precious little time to do that? Absolutely not. How many of you have seen me come and fucking troll you, dude? If that's one thing I don't do, I don't fucking troll. I don't need to. If I got something to say, I'm going to come under a fucking name like Miss Fucking Wonderful or Katie Roby and say what I got to say. I've never had to stand behind a fucking troll account and do bullshit. Fuck that. Fuck him. Then on two, oh, here's another. This is number four incident. This goes back to February 2018, by the way. Um, Twitter. Katie Roby, a.k.a. Miss Fucking Wonderful, makes a false claim that I was scamming from my son's funeral. This is when she began for, for her four years of harassment. Her audience and anyone that would listen entertain this lie in harassment spread. Now, at any point in time, When I was drunk off my ass, on the back of a Harley, dancing my ass off at a bar, getting myself out of trouble, getting myself into trouble, did I ever mention the likings of a fucking rattle can? Was that ever on my mind? For the people who watched me through the Steven years, through moving in here, to being with fucking Leslie, and was that he was but a brief mention here and there? Did I go live every day and ever discuss? No. I asked, it never fucking happened. This guy scared of me. So scared of me that he went live today just to talk about it, okay? That's how scared he is. I can't believe it. What a fucking fuck. Oh, here's another one. 6, 2018. Twitter. One of Katie Roby's many troll accounts is seen making a threat to come to my, ho to my home. Wasn't I banned on Twitter at that point? I can't remember. I may have been banned. I don't know. But either way, I didn't fucking do that. Lie. That's a new one to me. That, and that's a new one to him, too. He pulled that one out of his ass. And along with the Rumble one. Now, I hadn't, have you guys heard anything about this? Because I'm pretty sure he never discussed that online. If he did, I didn't hear it. And didn't, it didn't get reported back to me that it was said. Because it didn't fucking happen. He's sitting here lying on these documents. He knows damn well. Did he ever come live and cry baby and say, uh, Katie's making troll accounts on Twitter and Rumbler? No, nope, doesn't happen. Because it's not happening. He's lying about it and blaming it on me. Incident number seven, Katie Roby using a name to mock me makes a threat on Twitter to drive by my home. This was four months after she lied about me stealing from my son's funeral. Again, did not happen. Did, have you guys heard that one? Because that one's new to me as well. That one's new to me too. And you know, just like we have not stopped hearing about that fucking me, whatever, breaking his grief up or whatever, however he wants to say it. Um. You know, he hadn't let that one go. You would think if all these things happened, we would endlessly hear about them as well. We haven't because it's simple. It, it's simply a lie. All of the, the last four ones I ran off are fucking bullshit. If, if it was even, if there was even a shred of truth to them that he could twist into he's a victim, he would be live talking about it. Like, oh my God, there she is with her mock fake accounts and shit. He knows it's bullshit. That's why he said it. And he probably didn't think that I would receive a copy of this and be reading it off. I mean, obviously, obviously the courts know it's bullshit. But anyways. Four months after he lied. Okay, that was seven. Now eight. We're back to Twitter again. This is 722. In this screenshot, a viewer of mine reported her tweet and was removed for abusive behavior. I am next. In the screenshot, a viewer of mine reported her tweet and it was remo removed for abusive behavior. Okay, that might have. I don't know. I don't know. I don't see the picture of it. I did have a couple of them uh, have to be removed. I got like a six-hour suspension one day for one of them. I didn't make a threat, though. I said something fucking mean. Twitter, 729. Katie is seen inciting hate and saying, I need to bite the bullet. <coughs> That's when I said the world would be a better place without him. <clears throat> I'm sure it's along those lines. And I think maybe the same one that got removed. Maybe not. I don't know. But yeah. Okay. Here, I never threatened him. I never once threatened him. I just simply said, be better off without him. I mean, what the fuck? 
That's how is that threatening? He's again, he's a fucking man. And this dude's out there again, you guys, the same pussy who's so fucking scared of me and making up lies to try to get a petition order. Immediately when it got denied, he went right back to harassing the fuck out of me. I didn't say a fucking word about him until he started doing this shit again. I didn't say a word about him until I got the denial of the fucking petition. Didn't say a word about it. Well, you know, other than here and there, maybe a little bit with CJ. He is not the basis of our conversation like I am, like I am history or Yabra Butch or any of them, anybody that he has filed a uh, petition on. He's the one talking about it. He's the one instigating. He's the one inciting harassment. All of that. He is doing this. And he's a man and he's scared of three fucking women. Scared of three fucking women. I ain't buying it. I am asking the court to order the following relief. Prohibit the respondent from committing or threatening acts of domestic or family violence, stalking or sex offenses, prohibiting the respondent from committing or threatening to commit acts of d- domestic or family violence, stalking, yada, 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 prohibiting the respondent from harassing, annoying, telephoning, contact, or directly and in- indirectly communicating with me. That's filed on 810. 2022. Unfucking believable. So he did actually, and I'm I'm curious to see what he lied about in his petition on uh fucking Butch and Sam to see uh how he got them in court. Obviously, the court wasn't having this. You know what he did? I'm going to tell you, first of all, you know he tried to file theirs to an address that they, he, they don't even live at and trying to fraud the court. You know, so that they wouldn't get the paperwork and they would miss court or whatever you have, whatever have you, and get them in trouble. So right there, okay. But second off, what was I going to say? Uh, that's the first one, and he's saying all these things, but yet, does he not realize that he's the one who's like instant? Like, oh my god, he's so fucking fucked. Like he has really screwed himself. If I were, I would sue the fuck out of him if I was him for damages, anything that I could. If I was Sam and uh, Yaba, honestly. This is how we got, this is how we got it done. This is how his guys. First of all, any of the evidence that he had against me, I mean, in my, I want to see what he wrote on them. He filed, I think, Butch's first, and then he went for Sam, and then the next day he came and filed on me. So he did like three different petitions in three different days. So after he got the first two approved, he is showing the court, okay, you're a big giant pussy. We're not even going to look at this one. You know, it, there's patterns here. He always leaves patterns behind. You know what I mean? So that's why I think mine probably didn't get stuck. Had I been the first one that he filed on, I don't know. But I'd never done anything. So fine, he'd have to have the burden of proof. And I would have shown my fat ass right up in that court. And I would have to get a fucking attorney. You know? I don't know. I don't know if they had a hatchet burial or whatever. Um, I will never a day in my fucking life apologize to him. Never, ever, ever, ever. I stand behind everything that I fucking said and everything that I did because it was the fucking truth. I know I was being crazy and outlandish back then and people weren't really listening to me, but look at what I've said in the past. Ly- the Lyanna and fucking stinky butt shit. It ended up being true. The fucking Suboxone shit. Just, as soon as I found out it was true, I lost my fucking shit. Randy and B are liars. Boom. Don't talk to them no more. I don't stick around with motherfuckers who I find out are shady, okay? Um... And then with the whole Ron thing, it ended up being true, okay? And sometimes when you're crazy and you're drunk and you're saying mean shit, people aren't going to listen to you, okay? And I get that. And I get why people weren't. But it would anger me when people weren't because I know what I was saying was legit. And I felt like I wasn't being hurt. You know what I mean? And that's what it all boiled down to. So I went a little overboard. But now, looking back, everything that I said, it's, it's fucking true for a reason. If I have to go to fucking court and say it, I will. And like I said, millions of times over, okay, Ron, okay, Rattle Can. If I lied about it, then go get your fucking receipt from the from the funeral home and show everyone that I'm a big fat liar and debunk the video of everyone watching me call too. We'll wait. And we've been waiting for four fucking years. So never once happened. Don't you think if you were in his position and you knew 100% that all that GoFundMe money went to that, you'd have a fucking receipt? You could call the funeral home and find out to this day. He can't do that. He's a fucking liar. That's all I got to say about that. I mean, fuck. And then, you know, if you go back into time, I wish I, you know what? This is another reason I need my fucking YouTube channel. So I will literally bring up all of those. I will put, even if it, I have to upload them somewhere else, I will get all those videos back of that time period of when it happened. You guys can watch the fucking phone calls. You can watch everything. I kept all them videos. I kept them all. I have all the drama lives in the history that on all my, like they're spread out on some channels because we go down on one and go to, to a different channel. I have every single one of those videos. And that's how it, 
you know how I think ultimately my channel got terminated because they started um, getting the links to them old videos and shit. And I never would delete them because I knew something like this one day would happen and I wanted the video fucking evidence of it. Now, you know, that's all fucking irrelevant now, but yeah, that's why I kept them. So if I had that fucking, I would show them all. I wouldn't give a shit. I really would. I would sacrifice. I mean, it would go down in flames, drama live would, or uh, the second channel because of the shit that I would, you know, free for all. Tell everybody, okay, at this time, I'm going to release all these videos. So record them while you can, because uh, this channel is going to get terminated in like five, four. You guys wouldn't believe it, especially the rules now. Yeah, those videos. I, it was live. Can't lie about it. Just like when people try to say I scammed for the fucking PayPal and I had to call PayPal live and step hour by hour. Or what was it? Like every 15 minutes, how much was in there? How much was in there? Just to prove. I have no reason to lie to cocksuckers, dude. Why? I got it in. I, didn't st- I don't need to. I don't need to, dude. There's been some shady things that I've done that I might not admit to or might one day. I don't know. Only really one. But that's neither here nor there. It has nothing to do with any of these characters. So who cares? So we get these videos. Oh, yeah, if I got those channels back, right? That's the first thing I'm fucking doing is I'm going in there and I'm going to start collecting my evidence of years of harassment coming from him. I've got plenty of clips. I got plenty of things he said. He's sitting there saying, I love watching her dose, uh, die slowly and telling the world that I have AIDS when he knows damn well it's not true. That's a fucking hate crime. I'm going to sue you. Uh, that's it. You know what? I need to go fight. If anyone needs to be filing a protection order, it's me. And fucking now, yeah, obviously, Sam and Yah, because he's coming after them hard too. It's bullshit. When did he find out from YouTube? Oh, I got to contact them through a certain link. They want to talk to me and it's a different um, link than I've ever seen before. So I need to get my best wording game together and explain through